Okay, folks, so um, the other day I did a maybe a five or ten minute introduction to Bootstrap, but I wanted to put something a little bit more formal together. Um, so I'm going to you know, put this lecture together and record it and do all the normal steps so that um, you can come back and watch this over and, um, you know, not... You know, if if you missed the lecture last time, that you can still kind of not be lost. Okay, so so I want to put this together in a little bit more formal. Um, so this is uh, introduction to Bootstrap PowerPoint. Um, again, so what what is Bootstrap? Uh, it's a it's a tool. They they used to call it a, a framework. I don't know if they use that language anymore, but it's a tool uh, that's used to develop mobile-first sites, uh, websites. Uh, it, this is kind of its marketing. The world's most popular front-end open-source toolkit. There it is, a toolkit instead of a framework now. Featuring SaaS variables and mix-ins, which we haven't covered any of that at this point. A responsive grid system. A um, bunch of pre-built components and JavaScript plugins. So it's a way to develop mobile-first sites. And if you remember when we covered uh, responsive web development, we talked about desktop down and we talked about mobile up. And so this is using the mobile up uh, approach, right? Which uh, which is the preferred of the two because again it's kind of hard to, to work on mobile mobile uh, sites as uh, compared to the desktop sites because there's less real estate there's less, less room to work with um, so the one thing that I always found a little bit strange uh, is the URL is getbootstrap.com uh, you know I'm not sure um, you know I'm sure bootstrap.com belongs to something else um, you know, but so that's all it is. It's getbootstrap.com. Um, when it first came out, okay, I remember this when it first came out. You would always refer to it as Twitter Bootstrap, okay. Um, the reason we called it Twitter Bootstrap was because it was developed by some guys at Twitter. Um, you could follow them on their social medias, but these are the developers. Um, there's, you know. They look kind of normal, um, but yeah, there's some some uh, smart guys uh, that are developers at Twitter. Um, basically, there are other frameworks out there that do this, but um, this is this is the leading industry standard. Okay, so so there are other tools. Other frameworks that can do the same kind of thing, but but this is basically what people use. Um, there's been a bunch of major rewrites: version two, version three, version four, and um, very recently, version five is in alpha. Uh, every major rework, um, you know, has new features. It gets rid of old features. They make it better every time, but. Big bullet here, Bootstrap has made it much easier to build responsive websites, right? Instead of doing all the media queries yourself, instead of handling all the images yourself, um, they simplify the task. And so um, that's what the tool is used for. It's the industry standard. That's what I use. Um, some benefits of Bootstrap, uh, pretty easy to get started, uh, as you saw me do last time. Oh, I did make a video last time. That's right, I did post it. But this is just, again, a little bit more detail here. Uh, pretty quick to get using Bootstrap. Uh, it does use a mobile-first responsive design. So, um, again, benefits of, of that is that it's it's harder to do mobile-first um, So, as compared to desktop-first. Um, also, there are a lot of uh, themes that you can use. And so themes are all done with CSS. And, and when you implement a, a theme for your site, uh, you're really just adding a, a custom, someone else wrote a bunch of CSS, and you apply it to your bootstrap site. And so um, one thing that I'll add on to this, if I were going to say themes, I would also say and... 
templates. Okay. Um, a theme is just a bunch of pre-written CSS. A template is a bunch of pre-written HTML and CSS. So it's HTML and CSS. And many images a lot of times and maybe some JavaScript. It is exactly what it sounds like. It is a, it is a template to start development from. And what, what I personally love about templates is that I'm not a designer. And so to design a custom web page from scratch that looks good is very hard for me. I, I, I don't have that eye. I don't have that ability to code a site from scratch and make it look beautiful. However, using a template, that job becomes so much easier for me because I can download a template of a restaurant business and I can customize it from there to be exactly what my restaurant wants me to build. If, if I have a restaurant as a, as a client okay I'll give you an example of a very recent site that went live yesterday and uh, this this is a uh, moderate um, this is a site that started with a bootstrap template. Okay, it's got some pretty neat scrolling effects. Okay, um, a Rankin student in his third semester built this and I helped him to get it go live yesterday. So pretty simple template, but it's a good looking site, uh, kind of out of the box. And then what you get is you customize it for your needs. Okay, so again, um, you can definitely build a bootstrap site from scratch. If I, if I change this down, you'll notice it goes into a mobile type menu. And so this becomes a fully responsive site. Okay, now this is Bootstrap. And this started with a template. So if you want to make a good looking site, number one, if you're an artist or if you have that ability, then use your ability. I would tell you that in my experience, a vast majority of my students have not historically had that ability to make a good looking site from scratch. So instead, start with a template and I can give you some sites to do so. You definitely can get free templates. Um, if I personally, I'm creating a site tomorrow, right? 100% I'm starting with the bootstrap template. I am not starting from scratch. That's my decision. I know that a lot of people, so for a lot of people, that's not a popular decision, especially a lot of students, because students think that they should write everything from scratch. And I will tell you that that's simply not how it's done more often than not in 2020. Writing a complete site from scratch ground up is not how companies operate and the main reason why companies don't operate that way is it's not efficient it takes way too long to make something decent looking it's a lot faster to pump out websites using uh, kind of a starting point as your template uh, so from an efficiency standpoint you know if you're a business owner and your business makes websites 
you know, you might be able to make five websites a week if you're using templates. If you're not using templates, you might be able to make two or three websites a week. So you make more money uh, because you're more efficient uh, because you can finish more sites. And so uh, I'm a believer. Um, I believe that's a vast way that the majority industry works. So I just wanted to put that out there now. Um, Template Monster is one place where you can go for bootstrap templates. These are more premium templates, so you typically have to pay for them. Now, I recommend bundling that price into your price. And so if you're gonna charge $100 to build a website, well now you're gonna charge $180 to build a website. Okay, so, so you don't pay the template cost, you make the client pay the, the template cost. And so, um, you know, if I just search for restaurant templates, you know, you can kind of start with a good looking site. and customize it so just wanted to put that out there that's one template monster there's uh, free bootstrap templates um, with a couple of Google searches and a couple of clicks and some research you can find templates for free you can find them for pay um, the the point that I want to make another point that I want to make about this is that at the end of the day a client or a person is gonna look at your site and it's either gonna look good to them or it's not and probably one of the most important decisions that you can make if you're not a designer like me about whether your site looks good is what template do you choose so spending your time doing the appropriate research and finding a good template to start from could be could make the difference completely uh, on whether you wind up with a good looking site that the client is happy with or whether you end up with a, a, a crappy looking website that they're not happy with um, so spending time researching, finding the right starting point template is a big thing to do. One recommendation that I have is find three templates and show them to your client. You know, say, well, I can make a website look like this one here. I can make it look like this one here. I can make it look like this one here. You know, uh, this one, this first one might be free. The second one's a hundred bucks and the third one's 50 bucks. What do you want me to do? And let, letting your client provide their input as far as what they want their site to look like and it's a real easy message i'm not a designer i'm not you know i didn't go to school for design and so what i have to do sometimes is i have to outsource the design right i'm, I'm not i that that's not my skill set i can take a design and i can get it into code and i can get it live on the internet um The one thing about that I don't like about this site is that logo. It's you can kind of see the the white ring around the the letters. That's uh that needs to be cleaned up. But otherwise, I think it's a pretty good looking site. Okay. Back to the grid system. Templates are Again, my opinion here, I don't, I don't share a whole lot of opinions with you, but my opinion is that templates are very important. So, um, 
we start using Bootstrap by using uh, what's called a CDN, a content delivery network. And what that is is a couple of links. They're links to files on the internet. And so um, if you look here, this is a CSS link and its href attribute is bootstrapcdn.com. And then you have JavaScript CDNs uh, as well. So you need to link to bootstrap CSS. You also need to link to bootstrap.js. And what I did on my last video, I'll do it again, is I click get started and I scroll down a little bit and I just go to the starter template and this is really where I start from so I copy this into my page editor and it's gonna put everything where where it needs to here's the bootstrap CSS CDN here's all the JavaScript files that you need and it puts the JavaScript at the bottom because these tend to, um, it's a best practice to put your JavaScript at the bottom of the page because they, they load, um, it's some loading time associated with it. So you want like, uh, you want all the content and images and videos to load first and then the script to load after that. So that's, that's how you get started with uh, Bootstrap CDN. You can also optionally download the files and then you have to link to the local files instead of linking to the CDN. So it would be a relative path here instead of, instead of a, an absolute path to another server. Uh, now, again, what a, what a theme is versus the template, a theme if I go to bootswatch.com, these are themes that let you download a general look and feel for your site. And you can download here. And what you wind up downloading is a CSS file. And so instead of linking to this CSS file, you would remove this CSS file and instead you would link to the local, like if I download Superhero. Let me download Superhero. Notice it's a bootstrap CSS, so I'm going to put it in the repo that I'm in inside of my homework, chapter 10. I'll make a folder called styles. And I'll save that in there. So now I'll link to, oh, it's chapter 11. I put it in the wrong folder. Oh, well, I know how to do that. So I'll go up a directory. Then I'll go into chapter 11. Then I'll go into, where did I save this to? It's chapter 10. I'm already in chapter 11. Chapter 10. Chapter 10 homework, styles, bootstrap. Okay, now anything that I add, any components that I add, anything, it'll have this default look and feel. Instead of the primary color being blue, the primary color is orange okay and so um, you can do that uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll comment this out bring the original one back okay and then once we get putting some code in there um, we'll compare the two so that's with the default doesn't really change too much, just in uh, the words, hello world. 
but as you were to add nav bars and colors and add components, your site would have a default look and feel that would be different. That would be kind of this uh, super super superhero. Forgot how to talk. Wherever that was, if you preview it, you kind of see it just looks different colors, different fonts, different look and feel. Okay, so that's themes versus templates. Uh, Bootstrap does use a normalize, so built into the CSS um, is something called Reboot. And what Reboot is, is essentially a normalize. So it says Reboot builds on normalize. Um, so you could think of Reboot as a slightly improved normalize, but I'm sure that's someone's opinion. But basically, Reboot builds on Normalize, providing many HTML elements with somewhat opinionated styles using only element selectors. And so I just think of it as another Normalize. So same, same difference. All right, I uh, already showed you how to install Bootstrap via CDN, so we went through that. Uh, also showed you how to install Bootstrap JavaScript via CDN. Now one note here, one recommendation, is to get the full version of jQuery, not the slim version. So let's look at that. Down here, our first link, if we use that template, is not the full version of jQuery. I could tell that because it says slim. It says right here, jQuery version 3.slim.min. Min is a minimized file and, and you'll see that a lot um, that the files are minimized and all that means is if you look at them is that they have all the white space removed you know in our CSS files we put all this white space in there because it's easy to see but if I look at a minimized file there's no white space at all you know so what does that do well that shrinks the file size right so it's a smaller file to download the code works the same this is, this is just a CSS file, but there's no white space. There's no enters, there's no tabs. Um, so it's common that when you have a file like this to minimize it because it's a smaller file and it's a faster download. Now, um, what comes kind of stock is this slim jQuery. Um, recommendation is to get the full version of jQuery and they don't have that in here so so why is that a recommendation um, the slim version of jQuery just doesn't have the full jQuery features it's it's a it's a feature reduced version um, and so you might want to use a jQuery feature once you learn what jQuery is you might want to use a jQuery feature that's not that's not available in the slim version and so to use uh, the uh, jQuery slim version let's see down I feel like this has changed on me they have a CDN for jQuery as well and I'm just gonna pull that um, I don't think I need to click on download I don't want to oh if I click on download, somewhere in here is going to be a CDN. Da, 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 da. There it is. Other CDNs, Google CDN. So you can change. And this is not the slim version. You notice there's no word slim in here. This is the full version jQuery. Or if you just want to pull it off the PowerPoint, you could pull it off the PowerPoint. But it's basically the same thing. Okay, um, there. If you pull it off the PowerPoint, actually, it's even a little bit better because it has this integrity attribute. And what this integrity attribute does is it makes sure that this file has not been tampered with by 
hackers or malicious intended intended people. Okay, so so this this path here off of the PowerPoint is actually a little bit better than the path that I just demonstrated. Okay, a uh, beautiful thing about Bootstrap, really important concept here. Okay, so if you guys are kind of dozing off, uh, come back to me here because this is this is an important thing. I will repeat this um, at different points, but this is this is very important when it comes to Bootstrap. Bootstrap has built-in media queries. Okay, now a breakpoint is just as you know, a breakpoint is a width that when you use media queries, it changes the styles at certain points. Okay, so so again, um, media queries aren't going away. Bootstrap uses media queries. Okay, so sometimes to change the way your Bootstrap template is working, you have to understand how to change a media query and under understand how to change a style inside of a media query. So these are the Bootstrap 4 breakpoints. Okay, so these are the breakpoints built into Bootstrap. Okay, and again, you'll see everything is, everything in here is mobile first. Okay, meaning we start at a mobile device as small as zero pixels. So anything from zero pixels up to 750, uh, gosh, dyslexic there, 575, okay, zero to 575, which is one less than this, okay, is considered to be extra small. You see this, this extra small in the code, in the bootstrap code. You see the small, medium, large, extra large. This is how we code for the different viewports, for the different breakpoints. So instead of going into the CSS and coding media queries, which is what we were doing before, that is replaced with CSS classes. Okay, so all we have to do is code the classes in our HTML that implicitly works within these viewports. So it simplifies media queries drastically. Okay, I think that's going to be a relief for anyone in this class who's worked with media queries, and maybe you're you're still a little bit confused. We're no longer writing the CSS necessarily. We're now working with the HTML and just applying these extra small classes and these small classes. So you might wonder, well, okay, but what devices are these? The extra small and small, these are your cell phone devices. Okay, cell phones comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Okay, going all the way up to 767 pixels. So 767 and down, these are your cell phones. Their abbreviations in Bootstrap are extra small and small. Tablets then. Tablets are your medium-sized devices. Your medium-sized devices typically 768 all the way up to 991. So cell phones are these two. Tablets are your medium. Small laptops are going to be your large. So large typically are your smaller laptops, maybe 15-inch laptops or 16-inch laptops or 14-inch, 13-inch, you know, I don't know how small they go, but small laptops are your large, and that's going to be from 992 to 1199, and then bigger laptops and desktops are your extra large, okay? Okay. So if I'm making notes here, I would encourage you guys to take these notes because you use these abbreviations a lot in Bootstrap. I'll show you how. 
I'm getting there. Sorry. I just wanted to introduce them first. They're coming up. I'm glad you asked how. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump forward. Hmm. It's in it's in my next lecture. The answer of how is in my next lecture. But I can show you here. This is a preview of the next lecture because I do want to answer Evan's question, which is, how are these used? If I go to the Bootstrap documentation and I go specifically into layout, so here's the layout, we're going to learn about what's called the grid system. Okay, so here in the grid, the grid system, you could see these extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. So if we want to make essentially a wrapper, we can use the class of container. The class of container is used for extra small devices and up. Container small is used for kind of the same thing you can see container medium sets how how wide so this is kind of a fixed container is to say that container and container small are both 540 pixel wrappers so container and container small are 540 pixel wrappers container medium 720 pixel wrapper container large 960 pixel wrapper so that's one way that you use these typically you use a container fluid container fluid is is typically what you do for your wrapper right and that's that's what I typically do for wrapper um, Give me one second here. I'm going to show you a better example. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Because you do, like, as you saw, you saw the prefixes in the containers. Okay, so we'll get into the grid system in, in the next lecture. But you can see here what we have is we have a row, and that the magic number in. Um, when I was recommending taking notes, I, it didn't have to be on my PDF. You could take notes on a notepad. You could take notes on a piece of paper. I'm just, however you want to take notes is, is really up to you, whether that's, that's all. This is an example of using those prefixes, though. Um, the magic number in Bootstrap is 12, so you want your columns to add up to 12. Yeah, so this says on medium devices and up, medium devices and up, because remember this is a mobile first system. So when we say column medium four, that means for medium devices, large devices, and extra large devices that we're going to divide the columns into three because again four four and four adds up to your magic number of 12 and that's how medium or larger devices you get three columns okay but since you didn't define what it should do for small and extra small 
the default behavior is a single column. Okay, so these device prefixes are, are used a lot in specifically in the grid system when you're dealing with layouts in columns and rows and their different viewports, right? So, so that's one example of using the, the prefix of medium that stands for medium and up gets divided into three columns. Three columns, four, four, and four, they're, so they're all even, even sizes. Okay, so that's, we'll come back to this example in the next lecture because it's a slightly more complex, but it, it'll make sense when we get there. Now in CSS, you know, in, in, uh, if we're writing the CSS, we know to move things around on the page, we've got a couple of tools. That's margin and padding. We got a box model, everything's got a box around it. Uh, we can add margin on all four sides on all four sides. In Bootstrap, we can add margin on all four sides with a class. Okay, and so let's let's do a class. Actually, let's just look at this. Let's just look at this kind of out of the box. If I inspect here, and I look at this element. He's got a little bit of margin on the bottom, and that's that's all there is. So let's say I want to add some padding to the left. Okay, well, I'll start by adding padding on all four sides, and then I'll add padding to the left. Okay, you do so with the padding class. So let's add P hyphen five to our class of P hyphen five. So that's how we add padding in Bootstrap. Now you'll notice I've got padding. Now five is like five M's. It's like 500%. Um, so you can see let's let's just do let's let's do padding two. So you got eight pixels of padding. If I do P1, I've got four pixels of padding. P3 16, so you can kind of see the growth here. It went 4, 8, 16. Added another 8 to 24. Let's do, if that was 24, let's do 4.5. That didn't work. Unfortunately, you just, you just don't get to make it up. Like I was trying to just make up my own padding. And here's why. Because there's CSS behind, there's CSS behind the scenes that specify how much padding P hyphen four is. There is no P hyphen 4.5. So very specific ways to use margin and padding in Bootstrap. Let's do a class of M hyphen two. Again, M hyphen two. Now you can start to see we've got some margin there. We got margin on all four sides. We got padding and margin. So that's how we move things around in Bootstrap. If you just want padding at the top, you got PT, so let's just do PT. Good question, yes. If you want more customization, if you still wanna add padding the old fashioned way, 
uh, of just making your own styles.css and styling it there, yes. So what you do is after the bootstrap CSS, then you link to your own styles.css and that if you have the same or more specific selector, you know, you got to make sure that your selector is more specific than the bootstrap selector, uh, then, then uh, yours will overwrite whatever was built into the bootstrap CSS. So yes, you can still you can still write your own. So if I want margin top three, margin top two, so let's just let's just get rid of all the padding. I'm gonna do mt hyphen two. Now, if you remember, there was already margin on the bottom. So that margin on the bottom stayed there, but I added mar margin on the top. Now, when I look at these, you get all sides of padding, which that makes sense. PT, padding top, padding bottom, padding left, padding right. PX, left and right, that makes sense on the X axis. And PY is top and bottom. So all of those you know they're they're intuitive they make sense but you have to know how to if you never saw this slide then when you would come ac across a class of mb3 i will tell you you're going to be confused as heck right but if you know that that's just margin on the bottom and that's three units of whatever their measurement is then you can adjust it from there is that too much is it not enough you can you can make customization, but I'm telling you, if if any students in this class are not paying attention right now, they will be confused by Bootstrap when it comes to moving things around. Margin and padding are still important. Okay, um, the next thing that I wanted to cover, and this is not in necessarily in this lecture, but um, is this idea of containers. And again, we're always thinking mobile up, right? Mobile first. And so the idea here is that a container on a small cell phone, you know, is going to be 100% width. Then on a cell phone, it will be a majority. If you think of, uh, it goes up to 575 pixels. Well, this container will be 440 pixels of the 575. So it's like a 95% container, right? The container class would be 720 pixels wide of a medium device, which is 768. So you got 40 leftover pixels. It's not much. Same thing all the way up. So it's 100% width at the extra small device, and then it's a majority of the width on all the other devices. And and that's how these that's how these containers work. Now container fluid is 100% width of all the devices. So. Um, it's really common to have containers, and um, you know, if you just want a, a essentially a wrapper that's 100% width at all devices, you're using container fluid. You're using the class of container fluid. So let's go ahead and add a class of container fluid, and let's look at our heading now. Uh, I'm sorry, let's not put it on the let's not put it on the actual h1 div class of container fluid close the div format it it's going to look the same but if we inspect it here you could see that there's a fluid container does have a little bit of padding on there. Well, what does that give us? That gives us our wrapper. And so we learned in this class early on how to make a wrapper. And that is typically done with our containers. And you can, you can see the extra um, 
space on the sides, in this case it's padding, that it's even on both sides. 15 pixels of padding on both sides. I was typically using margin is what we typically used instead. Um, so it's really common to use containers and um, here you can kind of see the CSS that's being written um, for our container on the right hand side. You can see it's coming from this grid.scss and we talked about having SAS which is a version of CSS. We haven't really quite talked about SAS or less yet. Um, but it's, it's CSS like. It's kind of like CSS uh, with some additional things. Um, okay, so that's containers. Um, what I wanted to do though, which kind of tied into here, is I wanted to use MX Auto. So MX is horizontally centering our content. And so you know, for a, con a concept as simple as getting something in the middle, uh, it's kind of hard to do just to get something in the middle, you know, maybe text align center. Text align center works for text, but if you try and text align center an image, you'll find out it doesn't work very well. Um, so let's, let's center with MX Auto our little uh, MX Auto. Auto. Hopefully that shows up in the middle. That does not show up in the middle. And the reason being, I think, is this H1's interacting a little bit with it. Let's get rid of the H1 and just make it a little world still not acting up. You know what? I wonder if I have to... Because in the example, it gives a width, gives a hard width. And I'm wondering if this container fluid is not playing nice. Sorry for the derp. I, I, thought, I thought, oh, it'd be a good time to show off containers and then containers broke it. So let's take away the container and let's just follow the code example. Div class of MX auto. And then it did an inline style width of 200 pixels. And Alt L O. Okay, that centered it on the page and now what I'm wanting to do I could still have a container so I'm just coding this a different Okay, so that's how we get the container. Inside of the container, we're centering content. If we want this to be a little bit wider so it fits on the line, we just say something like that. So yeah, um, centering content made easier with Bootstrap. Uh, still clearly you know you want to mess around with it so you don't make those same mistakes that I made however um, you know pretty simple fix and you can see by, by MX Auto what it actually does is it sets a width and then um, it tells us content to display block and then horizontal margins to auto so you can kind of see what's going on behind the scenes. If you were to inspect this MX Auto class, it would do these things to that class. Um, and I covered 
uh, the viewport already. So how wide is your viewport? Again, extra small and small are your cell phones, mediums, your tablet, uh, small laptops, large laptops, and desktops. Um, now, if I were to do this, okay, so if I look at this example, M0 is for small and extra small. Then you've got medium, large, and extra large. So on M0, M0 means zero margin for small and extra small. Two pixels are, are two... Uh, so the actual calculation here is is here. There's a default value called uh, a spacer, which is um, kind of like a default variable. Um, and you take this spacer value times 0.5 to calculate how much margin there would be on medium s of screens. Um, Point being, this would be small and extra small. You'd get this calculation for medium screens times this two. You get the calculation of three units of margin on large screens and five units of margin on extra large. So I'm saying just units of margin, just realizing what those units are is based on some sort of calculation. Okay, and um, at least for medium and uh, extra large, uh, there's no calculation for the large screens. So large three would just be three units of whatever that space or variable is. Um, and I'll see if I can't figure out what that is. So you can kind of calculate how much margin there is. But this is another example of using the breakpoints as their classes. Small and extra small, medium, large, extra large. In CSS, we're able to set the width of any element. And keep in mind, anytime you're setting a width, you are setting a width relative to the parent. So like on our hands-on test, if we had a 50% wide element, and then we had four elements in it that were all 25%, they would all be 25% of the 50%. So you're always setting a width relative to the parent. And so you can do that with the W25 class. W25 is 25% width. W50 is 50% width. So let's try I'm just going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work. But I'm going to put W50. So as we see W50 is the class that should give us a 50% width for our div. And so what you see here is a 50%. That looks about 50% of the container that it's in. So this is the container is in blue. If I come down, this div is 50% of that container. So let's change it to 25. So instead of using inline style to set the width, I can use a bootstrap class to set the width. Now I've got a width of 25%, so it's working perfect. I see some questions coming. Does it matter what order you put the bootstrap classes in? No, these classes can go in any order. You know, as far as parent and child, yes, you know, you got, you know, that can change things quite a bit. But like, if you're just talking about on this div, can I put the W25 before the MX Auto? The answer is yes. 
and that's not going to change anything. Evan, your question is P hyphen 1.25 does not exist. You can only use the exact classes that they have pre-built. Um, so P hyphen 1.25 does not exist. Yes. Yes, they are limited. Yes, it does have a number limit, and, and the number limit is exactly uh, the one, two, three, four, and five, you know, as far as that goes. One through five. Yeah, I think so. Um, let me let me double check that. Again, um, let, me, let me double check the docs. And what I would do is I would go into Let's see, I would search for margin and padding. Margin and padding spacing utilities. Yeah, there it is, zero, one, two, three, four, and five, and then auto. So those, those are the built-in. So uh, you might have picked this up, but I, you know, this PowerPoint was made directly from reading the documentation. Um, so, you know, actually, I give all the sources down here, right? Right on getbootstrap.com. Um, just like we had viewport width, Bootstrap has viewport width. Uh, VW. Um, and there's min width and min height. So... You know, the min width is 100% viewport width. You know, that still exists in Bootstrap. There are some classes that are built in to Bootstrap that can change our color. Um, yeah, Drew's exactly right. Yeah, you could always add your own custom styles. So if you're like, oh, well, I wanted more margin on the left than what M ML5 gave me, you could always push it over some more with custom styles. Good point. Um, so you, we have this class of text primary, a class of text secondary, and, and you just use these classes to change the color. Uh, keeping in mind that um, the color palette is defined by the theme. So if you change the CSS like I did before, right, instead of using instead of using the CSS um, on the CDN, I, would, I downloaded a theme CSS. That could change what the color of primary is. Instead of being blue, it could be red. Um, so again, these are all classes that adjust the text color for demonstration purposes. We could do text hyphen primary and that's going to change our color for us it takes a little bit of getting used to to writing attributes to change style like if it simplifies the process I understand that but Style is supposed to be written with CSS, and it still is, but I'm not writing the CSS, so it feels abstract, like, how, you know, I'm not doing it. So I don't like it <laughs> in ways. But it's also easy, so I do like it. Once you get over the learning curve, I'd say it's easy. There are background colors. So if I want a BG hyphen info, so text colors, background colors, BG info. We 
We get font colors, we get background colors. with a big list of options. So BG obviously for background. Border colors. Now border colors are done with two classes. You need the class of border and the class of the border color. So let's do border space, border dark. Border and border dark. Now you can see the border. Going through these a little bit faster because those aren't too too hard to follow. Some uh, some classes for text. Uh, text left, text center, text right. Uh, I think you know once I kind of. Demonstrate one, you'll get all. So let's do text right. So I'm going to take off the MX Auto because that's centering the text. And let's do text right. And so what do we have here? Well, we got 25% width, and the text is to the right in that 25% width. So if you take off the 25% width, actually you could delete this whole div at that point, then it's going to be all the way over, it takes up 100% width. So that's text alignment, text transform, now I will tell you, I, I am a <clears throat> I do advocate, I do, I do like using templates, okay? I think templates are great, and I think you, know, you and I can make beautiful looking websites with, with the help of some templates, because we're not designers. Um, a lot of templates use this text transform property, and it can drive you nuts. If you don't know where it's coming for them, you know, text trans transform of capitalized so that every letter that you type it is a capital letter. And all you're trying to do is make your letters so that they're not all capitalized. Um, you know, you can you you need to delete you know text capitalized or text uh, uppercase, text lowercase. Um, uppercase is all uppercase. Capitalized text is kind of what you would expect. If I zoom in to the PowerPoint here, um, it's however it's typed. So however the text is typed is the actual capitalization. Oh, of course, can we make things bold? Can we make things more bold? Let's see how well this works. Font weight bold versus font weight bolder. So I'm gonna take this from an H1 into a paragraph because H1s are by default bold. So let's look at this. Ah, there's hello world over there. So let's do font weight bold. You can see that goes bold. And let's add the ER. I don't know that that works very well. This never works very well. Font weight bold versus bolder. Font weight bold, font weight bolder. Save it. So that's bold. If I add the ER and save it, yeah, that never works well. Bold versus bolder. Maybe someday, because it should. All right, let's delete these colors because that's hard on my eyes. So that's done with the text primary and the background of info. Okay, back to the slide deck. 
Bootstrap uses Flexbox. That's why I wanted to learn Flexbox. If Bootstrap didn't use Flexbox, I might have skipped the chapter. Because you can get responsive layouts using Bootstrap without knowing all the fine details of Flexbox. But not every site is built with Bootstrap, so Flexbox is a useful tool. All of the, the Flexbox properties, and there were a lot of them, there were a lot of Flexbox properties, they all have Bootstrap equivalents. Um, so obviously these display none, display inline, display inline block, display block, display flex. All of these aren't really necessarily flexbox. But if you want a flex container, you target the container and tell it to, to display flex with was what we were doing. And now what we need to do is we need to add the deflex class to a parent. So let's bring this down and tell, instead of container fluid, we're going to tell our parent to deflex. I'm just going to get rid of all this. Actually, I'm going to keep the border. This will be our flex. Item one, two, three, and four. Now keep in mind, these are all paragraphs. By default, paragraphs are block level elements. So these should be on top of one another. But because we turned the parent into a flex container, these are now automatically kind of floating right next to each other and their widths are only the width of the content. So if we widen the content, you know, keep in mind that that's the way Flexbox works. It's going to try and put everything all on that line um, until it needs to wrap. So that's getting the Flexbox started. This is how we start Flexbox in Bootstrap, is we tell the parent to display Flex. Oh, let me read this slide just one second. You can use breakpoints to change how the display property, oh, depending on the width of the viewport. Oh yeah, we've done that. So in this case, a class of D none. Well, D none as we as we saw, D none is note display none, so it removes it. So on small, I'm sorry, on extra small, small, and medium devices. So just by default, D none, because it doesn't have another prefix that starts with extra small, then small, then then medium. It's it's hidden. And then on display large and up, so large and extra large, then it's visible. Right? So if you want to hide something on small devices and make it visible on other devices, you change its display. Very useful. This is very useful stuff. I hope you, you can envision the um, the use here, the use case of like hiding a picture or, or maybe you want a big button to pop up on like a mobile view. So when, when you're in a, a mobile view, you see something, um, but then it's not there on a big screen monitor because you don't want the user to click to call you now on a monitor because you can't click it uh, with your finger, you know? In this case, extra small and small, an item would display block, which means uh, stacked, right? Block is stacked. 
on medium devices and up then it would display flex keep in mind flex is horizontal so it would be a flex box by default we got flex row so our flex direction is row that's the default we could change it to flex row reverse flex column and flex column reverse so if you remember this is the main axis we add these classes to change the main axis so if we do flex row reverse We get item one, two, three, and four. So it's working the same way the Flexbox did. It's a beautiful thing, Flexbox being built into Bootstrap. We've only got 10 more slides. We're almost done, folks. Uh, you can do direction with breakpoints. So just like we said before, okay, um, by default, we're going to be flexed to direction of column until you get a large screen. So extra small, small, medium would all be column. And then large and extra large would be a row. So let's see if I demonstrate this. Okay, so we're displaying flex. We're telling it to be in a column for small, extra small and medium, and then a row for large and extra large. So obviously now we're, we're in a row because we're either large or extra large. And then eventually we break it down into a column. So there's, there's the split where it goes from row to column. This is just the most useful tool. And I know we've been lecturing for three hours today, but I hope that you guys are with me and I hope that you're seeing the ease that this, you know, can, can give us. Yeah, it is a lot, but on the positive side, it's just all classes. It's all done with, it's all done with uh, classes now instead of HTML and CSS. Oh, all of our justified content, it's all still here. So let's do space evenly. So we got content start, content end, center, between, and around. I'm not sure why this one's crossed out. I don't know if evenly is not available. Let's just do justify content around. So let's take that out. Justify content around. So that works. And what we don't have, justify content evenly. Curious if they, they didn't build in support for that. Sure didn't. Sure didn't. That's why it must have been crossed off. That's why we crossed it off. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. These uh, Twitter developers are slacking. <laughs> That's, okay, uh, of course we got the main axis, we got the cross axis as well, and we've got all align items. And so this, this is gonna work the same way. I'm not gonna demonstrate all of these because if you understood Flexbox, you understand everything up until now, you, you'll understand this slide. 
more classes to justify uh, or, or align items on the cross axis. Align self is still there. And look, we even made the, the pictures from the, the same slide deck from uh, the Flexbox slides. Flex grow is still there. Flex shrink is still there. Order is still there. We can change the order at different breakpoints as well. So if you want the order for your small, extra small, and medium, and then to be different than the order from your large and extra large, you can change the flex box order uh, per per each breakpoint. Do you see when I said you know these breakpoints are used all over the place? And then someone said why, and they weren't really asking why about that. They were asking why about something else. But I'm glad that we covered the breakpoints. Flex wrap is still there, and align content. Um, and this was the same way. If you had an align content on a single row, it did not make a difference uh, when you were learning Flexbox. But um, you know. Flex start, flex end, center, stretch, all that. It's all still there. Flex box is still there. Okay, so that is the first of, I think, about six. We got six um, bootstrap slides in addition to the slides from the textbook. Okay, I'm going to cover them um, a little bit each day, you know, even, even on days that aren't standard lecture days I might try and squeeze some in okay we covered a lot on this one that's definitely enough to get you started and then some okay so I will go ahead and stop the recording here in an hour and 15 minutes